Good morning again. Uh, another worked exam question. This one's from 2011 exam one, so the multiple choice exam from the trigonometry and geometry section. It's question six. So let's have a look at it. In a parallelogram PQRS, the angle QPS, so we're looking at the angle P, is 74 degrees. We've labeled that. In the parallelogram, PQ is 18 and PS is 25. The length of the longer diagonal is parallelogram is close to 2. So if those two angles are 74 degrees, they equal 148. So let's put that in there. It's 148, those two angles. We can work out what these two angles in here are by subtracting the 148 from 360, which equals 212. So the, both these angles here combine to make 212. So we can divide that by 2 to find a single angle, which is 106 degrees. So we know that that angle there and that angle there is 106 degrees. Once again, it's another question that I've found out all the angles before I've even gone further to ask what, find out what the question's actually asking. So really do get in that habit. So the length of the longer diagonal in this parallelogram is closest to. So you have to determine which one is the longest length? Is it Q to S or is it P to R? And how you determine which one is the longest diagonal is that the biggest angle will make the biggest diagonal because the angle is opened up a lot more. So what we are actually looking for in this question is finding out the length of P R. That's what we're trying to find. So let's draw this triangle out again. Always good to get the information out of the question. We've got 106 here. Now, a common mistake in this question would be to assume that that there is 37 because it's half of 74, but that's incorrect. If it was a right angle, you could say it was 45 apiece, but you can't uh, because the angles aren't the same when they're divided. We know that this is 25 degrees, 25 centimeters, sorry, and this length here is the same length as that, so that's 18. So what we're trying to find in this question is this X here. That's a better X. First thing, let's label all the sides of the triangle. So let's just call this A, we can call this one B, and we can call that one C, and then we can label the rest of these. All right, so do we have any pair of information? No, we don't, so it's not the sign rule. Um, We've, we've got the angle and the two sides, so we're using cosine rule. So in this case, we're trying to find A, the cosine rule would be B squared plus C squared minus 2 times B times C times cos A. So let's fill in this information. So B is 18, so 18 squared plus 25 squared minus 2 times B is 18 times C is 25 times cos A, which is 106. So this answer, if we put that into our calculator, becomes 34.598. So 34.598 would actually round up to 34.60, so 34.6, which is the answer D. Now let's have a look at the assessor's comments for this one. So question six in geometry and trigonometry, 34% um, got this correct. So once again, another poorly answered question uh, for some very simple um, mathematical manipulation. Um, it seems that a lot of people who do this are finding it hard to choose when to, which formula to use, so we can always follow that. If it's a right angle, so Cartoa or Pythagoras. If we have a pair, use sine. If it's not a pair and we've got the two sides that make the angle, then it's cosine. So if you can really get into that habit of going through all those steps to choose which formula, and also, as I said at the start, identifying all your angles in a question from even before reading what the question is asking to do, because as I've just demonstrated, you always quite often use the angle that you've found to in the question. Hopefully you went well in this question and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this flip. Thank you.